Manchester City and Arsenal have just drawn 2-2 in one of the most intriguing games the Premier League has served up so far. We're going to be breaking down everything in this video, including the new tactic that Pep Guardioli utilised to try and break down Mikel Arteta's Arsenal and how Arteta countered it mid-match. This is going to be a good one. Going into this match, Pep Guardiola had a problem. In the two previous fixtures where Man City faced Arsenal, Man City actually failed to score on both occasions, so Pep Guardiola needed to pose a new threat to Mikel Arteta's Arsenal, and we all know now how they generally set up, utilising those two forwards in a flat 4-4-2, allowing for double-ups on the wings, but also making sure there are combative, properly decent side in the air and making sure they're really defensively resolute. Arteta made a couple of changes. Urien Timber came in at right back instead of in favour of Ben White. I think this is down to his athleticism and his technical ability on the ball. And Calafiori, with his left foot, came in at left back. I really liked this pick, not only because it allowed both Calafiori and Timber to invert whenever they needed to, but it also meant that they had a bit more structure and a bit more passing lanes opportunities on this left-hand side. Right moved over to this right-hand side, and yes, it was the right-hand side in this particular instance in the first half, and that meant that he was able to go forwards and link up with Bukayo Saka. But Pep Guardiola needed to change something. He needed to make sure that his side were able to get the better of Mikel Arteta's Arsenal, and that came down to how Man City set up in possession. And it's down to this player right here, Guardiola. He had a completely different role to the way he normally plays. Normally, you see Man City wingers cut inside and that allows for Guardiola to really hug the space out on this wide left hand side. This means that Man City can have a greater number of players in the centre of the pitch. Instead, Guardiola does something completely different. He instead fills this pocket of space right here. Now, you might think this is where Gundogan goes because Rodri's going to move centrally. You've got Bernardo Silva on the right and Gundogan on the left-hand side, almost as two attacking midfielders. Instead, Man City decided to flood this area, and this was what they came up with. Guardiola held this left-hand side, Gundogan held the centre, and Bernardo Silva held this right. Rodri was the main sole pivot, and then you've got the back three, who are able to recycle possession when necessary. Now what this does immediately is it means that Rice has so much more to worry about. Because with Gvardiol's ability to then run in between this channel and Bernardo Silva's ability to run in between this channel, Arsenal had a massive problem. Because it then means that the two fullbacks want to tuck inside. And this is what Calafiori did quite a lot. He tucked in next to Bernardo Silva, but the problem is, is it left the winger for Manchester City isolated on a number of occasions against Martinelli, who doubled up. So quite a lot of the time, what you saw was Calafiori tucking in, Timber tucking in, and Guardiol just occupying this space. And what you've got here is you've got three Man City players against the two Arsenal players. And this was really shown for Manchester City's first goal. So I want to highlight a couple of things here. So you've got Savinho with the ball right here, out on this left-hand side. Notice how much Calafiori has stepped up. Notice how aggressive he is. But at the same time, notice the positioning of Bernardo Silva. Now, Gundogan's in the centre of the pitch, just a little bit further ahead than Rodri, and he's occupying Declan Rice right now. But what I want you to notice is when we carry this on, look at Gabriel. Look at Gabriel. Because of the movement of Bernardo Silva into this position, because Savinho takes that turn round, because Calafiori doesn't get there, Bernardo Silva moves into this pocket. This forces Gabriel to then have to come and try to deal with it because he's concerned about that channel, the channel between fullback and centre back. But in doing that, because Saliba isn't necessarily as clued in at the same time, Haaland has a little bit more space. If we take it back just a second, we can see the space between Gabriel and Saliba. Not very much room for Haaland to work with. But if we go on a little bit more, we can see that that space is now opened. Haaland is now ready to make his move. And because Savinho has been able to get away from Calafiori and move centrally, because of the movement of Bernardo Silva dragging out Thomas Partey, it means that it's big danger time. Big, big danger time. And really, you've got that pass through into Haaland, which is just so, so dangerous. Savinho plays that pass. I think he waits 
re a really long time. I think he could have played it a little bit earlier. But he waits and waits and waits, and Haaland just beats that offside. It's a really well-held line by Gabriel and Saliba at the same time as well. I think they do a really good job, but Haaland has too much pace, too much physicality, and then you're asking, can he finish? Can he take that moment? And we all know Erling Haaland, of course he can. He scored a ridiculous amount of goals. It's about that 1v1. He shoots it to the bottom right-hand corner, his bottom right-hand corner, David Arai's bottom left, and it's just a brilliant, brilliant goal. But it's been worked because of that space that was opened up due to the new system and new tactic that Pep Guardiola employed in this match, just on the other side that Kovacic was on. Fantastic. If Trossard drops, you've got more space, but it's also making Arsenal regress that little bit more, and it makes it more difficult for them to get out. It was a really interesting problem that Pep Guardiola posed Mikel Arteta's Arsenal, and it did start to get the better of them. Martinelli ended up dropping back to try and deal with Savinho, and look what happens once you start to drag these Arsenal players back a little bit. Saka contending with Doku, you've got Trossard and Havertz onto Rodri. Of course, this becomes Kovacic a little bit later, but the system still stays the same. Haaland is on Gabriel and Saliba and all of a sudden you've got Manchester City pinning Arsenal back continuously. Not only that but it means that Arsenal can't play through the centre of the pitch. They have to go wide and if they go wide you've then got the ability for Walker to contest a Kanji to contest and Diaz to sweep up whenever he needs to. This is why Arsenal found it so difficult to get out on so many occasions because Man City were doing such a fantastic job of preventing those passing lanes forcing Arsenal to go out wide and then they recycled at every single given opportunity and it's down to the positioning of Gvardiol. Arsenal hit back though and I think this is really crucial because not only do you need to be defensively resolute when you're playing a team like Manchester City especially at the Etihad you also need to be able to take advantage of the moments that you create and here they do. Yes they might get a little bit of fortune but I've got to say, I know a lot of people were complaining about Kyle Walker and the fact that he was dragged out, but he looks fairly in position here. I understand why they're not happy, but you've got to play to the whistle and you've got to play to the way that the game is being played out. And Gabriel Martinelli has just afforded far, far too much space. Look at Walker. He's just not set at all. He's still pointing to his team. He's still pointing over. He's not even paying attention to Martinelli here. I think he could do a little bit better. Perhaps that's being a little bit harsh, but he allows Gabriel Martinez to drive him into the box. He drives outfield, and then it's just about the strike. It's about this man right here, Calafiore. It's about his ability on the ball and his ability to strike that. I like the fact that he doesn't actually go for power. I like the fact that he curls it round to the, almost to the outside post. It's such a good shot. It's a brilliant, brilliant hit. And the weight of pass from Gabriel Martinelli was really, really good. But I'm not really having the fact that Man City weren't particularly set. I think there was a lot more to happen before the shot comes about. And it's a fantastic goal. And from that point, it's game on. And you do think that it could be Arsenal's day. Now, Arsenal take advantage. Let's take a look at their second goal. But before we do that, there was a corner, and it's this one, that happened just before the second goal. And we're going to highlight this right here. It's Jeremy Doku up against Gabriel. Now, already you can see there's a height difference. They're on the edge of the penalty spot. But at the same time, I want you to keep your attention on Gabriel Martinelli because both of these players are going to have pivotal roles in the build-up to this potential chance. Now, we know how good Arsenal are at set pieces and Manchester City are no slouches at defending them either but it's the way that they work this that I think so so impressive look at Kai Havertz ready to make a run in towards the back post look at Gabriel ready to make that run through towards the back post as well but Gabriel Martinelli is the play that we're going to be really focusing on as the ball gets whipped in by Bakayo Saka it's currently in the air here as the ball gets whipped in you've seen that Gabriel has already lost Doku. Kai Havertz is now sprinting towards the back post and you've got a big scuffle, a big, big change happening in and around the box. There's chaos going on. And then I want you to notice this. Look at Gabriel Martinelli right here. Now, technically, he's not impeding Edison. Technically, he's not touching him really. He's not really focusing on him. He's just turned his body. And I think this is something really clever that the Arsenal technical staff have been able to work on. It's being about blocking the goalkeeper. And if you block the goalkeeper and prevent him from coming out and claiming crosses, you then have the ability to get much closer to the goal. And in getting much closer to the goal, you can use your physical presence in your Gabriels, in your Salibas, in your Havertz 
towards the end of the back post. But Karasaka is almost whipping it to try to go for goal. And he was obviously not doing that, but it's so close. You can see why that would be thought. And because Edison can't get to the ball, we've now got a problem with Gabriel. Now he misses this header, but he doesn't miss the next one. And we're going to take a look at the similarities between this opportunity and the goal. So let's take a look. You've got a load of Arsenal players towards the back post, but Karasaka is about to whip the ball in, and you've got Gabriel out on this penalty spot. Carl Walker has been changed for Jeremy Doku because they're terrified about Gabriel getting a run on. But what we also need to notice is Gabriel Martinelli and the role that he plays in the build-up to this and what he does with Edison. Because Man City are not clued onto this. They don't they didn't realize it. They didn't see it. They didn't know what was happening. Bakara Saka hasn't even hit the ball yet. The ball is not in the air, and Gabriel has already made his movement. Carl Walker is lost. He's in no man's land. Havertz hasn't even made a play to the back post yet, and Gabriel Martinelli is taking up his position. Calafiori is moving around to the back post, and all of a sudden you're starting to see the chaos unfold. The ball is getting closer towards the box now, and you've got chaos. And look here. I just want to focus right here. That is Gabriel Martinelli. And look what he's doing. Just backing up towards Edison. He's not fouling him. And I think this is something that Arsenal have really worked on really, really well. He's not fouling him. It's not a foul. He's standing there. He's just standing and turning. But he's holding his body. He's holding the goalkeeper off. I think the goalkeeper possibly could be a little bit stronger. But because he can't come for the ball, you've now got this. Gabriel is in play. Kai Havertz towards the back post is in play. You've got possibly a header at the back post with Kai Havertz onto Bernardo Silva. Now that is not something that Manchester City won. They flooded the front post. And it's something that I think teams are really going to need to look at. Because as we look forwards again, Gabriel has a free header. Look at that launch. Look at that leap. And Kyle Walker hasn't even got off the ground. Gabriel is in mid-air. Kai Havertz is ready to hit that back post. It's just so, so well done from Arsenal. And this deserved a goal because of how well it was done, because of how well it was orchestrated. The strength, the power, the, tactic, the tactical work that went into this was sensational. And everyone behind these Arsenal corners needs to be given so, so much credit. Brilliant. Now, what else you see is with Savinho and with Bernardo Silva doubling up on this right-hand side, when you actually do end up playing crosses into the box, not only are you looking for Haaland, you could also be looking for Gavardiol at this back post. And if it misses, you've got Doku to come and recycle. It's a really ingenious way to try and combat this 4-4-2 that Mikel Arteta's Arsenal have almost perfected at this given point in time. And up until that first half, although they went into the first or into the second half, I should say, 2-1 down, Man City were by far and away the better side, even though they were losing at that point, which meant that Mikel Arteta needed to change something. Leandro Trossard gets sent off, which means that Arsenal have a huge problem. They're down to 10 men, but Mikel Arteta still has to try and change something. He's still going to try and fix it. What does he do? He takes off Bukayo Saka, and you might be thinking, why is he doing that? That's crazy. He takes him off for Ben White, and Arsenal go to a back five. They set up without a striker, and they play a 5-4 meaning that the four in front just shuffle across to try and stop those passing lanes, and it also means that they've got wing-backs to try and contest the wingers. Now, what you've also got at the same time is this. You've got Ben White as the right centre-back, and you've got Gabriel as the left centre-back. Now, what this automatically does is it prevents the lanes that Bernardo Silva and Gavardiol were occupying. It frees up Declan Rice and Thomas Partey, Declan Rice moved over to this left-hand side in the second half, and it frees them up to be able to contest the players on the edge of the box. Once this happens, Man City have no way through. They can't play through the centre because it's too congested. They can't really play through these channels either because it's too congested, and that means that they have to recycle out wide. But Man City have a problem. Although Erling Haaland is in the box, he knows that he's got to contest with William Saliba, Ben White and Gabriel, all very good in the air, all very good aerially, which means that crosses into the box aren't really an option either. So Man City have a huge problem. The rotations that they tried to use weren't 
successful, they weren't utilised and they weren't quick enough. Which means that Arsenal were very, very comfortable for the entirety of the match. Yes, you might say they time-wasted a little bit. Yes, you might say that they struggled on occasion. But it was this tactical setup that prevented the new tactic that Pep Guardiola tried to instil in this Man City side. Moving Ben White into this channel prevented Guardiola from moving through and it allowed Gabriel to move across to be able to contest Bernardo Silva. And all of a sudden what you saw was this. Bernardo Silva coming out wide, mixing up with Savinho, but they were very comfortable. Same thing happened here. Doku was out wide, Guardiola ends up coming out a little bit and Havertz tucks in. Once Havertz tucks in, you've got Partey who's able to deal with Gundogan, Rice who's able to come and contest Kovacic when even he needs to, and it meant that Arsenal were just fine. It was a brilliant tactical change from Mikel Arteta, which was a huge way that they combated the setup that Manchester City had, and it was just brilliant up until the end. Arsenal defended valiantly for the entirety of the half, and they fall asleep at the last second and this is Manchester City's goal in the 98th minute yeah you heard it correct the 98th minute Jack Grealish takes a short corner towards Ilkay Gundogan and I think personally Kai Havertz needs to come and try to challenge this I understand it's difficult I understand you're trying to defend the corner but you've got to try and contest it Thomas Partey is waving him out I think and you've got to try and stop that Played on, and before Kai Havertz can even get there, you've got a problem. Grealish is now in the box with a 1v1 situation against Havertz. It's not necessarily the worst, but you've now got an option of Gundogan on the edge of the box. You've also got Kovacic, who the ball goes to. It's just ah, such a shame for Arsenal, because as it gets put through into the centre of the box, I think you need a contest here. I think you need somebody to come out and try and close this. Uh, Partey sees it a little bit too late and I just think they switch off the chaos the mayhem at the last second and obviously they will have been shattered from all the effort they've put in and it's such a shame for them but in the end it falls to John Stones who takes a swing at it and he ends up scoring this was an unbelievable game he will be quite happy and I think they possibly might have got away with the one Arsenal defended just brilliantly but in the end it's Man City who are the happier with the result. Arsenal was so, so close. But what a game that was. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Arsenal fans, tell me how you're feeling. Man City fans, what did you think of the game? I thought it was absolute cracker as a neutral. Just fantastic. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new, and I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.